I remember it as if it was yesterday. My papa took me to see the ancestral home of our clan. The first song on the album is called uh, Glasgow 1877. It was also the first song I wrote for Scrooge. Um, this uh, Ilian Pipe melody line has been in my head for years. Um, every time I read the first chapter of the book, I imagined the Scottish Moors, uh, Scrooge's childhood days. I just had that melody in my head and started to build the song from that. Um, I had to include a Gaelic line there as well which was uh, translated by Miss Maeve McKinnon. And uh, Johanna just does a beautiful job singing, singing the line. And it's, it's very calm, relaxed, uh, Vaughan Williams kind of uh, approach to the song. And yeah, I really, really love the, love the result and it ends to a little hint of the Dawson theme that we hear again in song number six. In, in track number two, which is called Into the West, um, I shamelessly entered the Ennio Morricone territory. Uh, it's all about the Wild West times of Scrooge as a teenager in his early 20s. That was the inspiration for the song, basically. And when you are talking about Wild West and uh, New Orleans, you just have to have the banjo and the harmonica included. So it was a lot of fun toying around with those. Track number three, uh, Duel and Cloudscapes, was the hardest song on the album to do. Because uh, I believe for the first time ever, I tried to write a song for comedy, so to say. This book uh, has such beautiful and witty comedy in it, I just couldn't ignore it. I didn't want to ignore it for the album. But then again, doing a soundtrack for comedy just might be the hardest thing I've ever done. And uh, the C part, the cloudscape part of this song was my first attempt to do that. And I'm pretty proud of the result, at least it always puts a big smile into people's faces when they hear it. Then off to Australia. Um, the song is called Dreamtime. Originally called Dreamtime Duck, but for some <laughs> reasons uh, we decided to leave out the duck, so it's only Dreamtime. Introducing uh, the whole Mayamaki on the Vichery Do. That's the biggest thing about this song and I just built the whole song around the literary do. And it's very hypnotic, very elemental, very dirty, uh, scorching hot. Of course Scrooge was down under doing some prospecting so we needed to include like a sample of the peak axe hitting the rock, so that's what you hear in the end. A lot of fun to build, build that sound with Tero. It's actually anvil plus uh, different ethnic percussions together. The next two songs, they're about uh, Scrooge's adventures in Klondike, Alaska, which are my personal favorites of, of all the Don Rosa stories. Track number five called Cold Heart of the Klondike. It has a double meaning. The cold heart of the Klondike is the actual winter landscape and also uh, Scrooge appears to have quite a cold heart occasionally. So that's where the album title comes from. Um, this song features a good friend of mine, Tony Kakko, who was actually the first person I ever told about the idea of doing a soundtrack for the Life and Times series. That was already back in 1999, so I just had to ask him if he would come and join the project. And luckily, he did. From the air of utter solitude, of wilderness Song number six is called The Last Sled, which obviously is based on probably my all time favorite 
duck story called The Last Sled to Dawson, where Scrooge goes back to Klondike to find his uh, long lost sled that's been trapped under ice for decades. And uh, the last two pages of this story is just the best and most touching piece of graphic novel ever. So I urge everybody to go and read it. Um, very inspiring story um, and the song in itself is probably my favorite in the whole album. Track number seven is called Goodbye Papa. Uh, it includes a section of the Highland Games. The song completely written for piano originally, but then I had to include this Highland Games part in the middle. Another sort of comic relief of the album, at least to my ears. And then the last two, three minutes of the songs are all about a very touching moment of Scrooge's father passing away. And the way Don Rosa has scripted that part of the story just gives me the shivers every single time. It's so beautiful. And he has said that uh, when he drew that section of the story, the passing away, he always heard the music from The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, a legendary film, which I also love. And what you hear on this album is what I hear when I read that section. So hopefully it does justice to the story. To Be Rich, track number eight, is by far the darkest song on this album. It's set somewhere between the chapters 11 and 12 of the book, when uh, Scrooge has been alone in his mansion for decades. Um, I just tried to capture the melancholy, uh, the bitterness and the longing of those long years in, into this song. Both Johannes are doing a beautiful job. Beautiful job in the singing. Track number nine, uh, it's called A Lifetime of Adventure. It's kind of brings together the whole story. It is by far the most song-like track on the album. That's why it was chosen to be the single release also. It's the only song in the album where you can hear um, electric guitars. Mikko is doing a wonderful solo in the end. Um, the drum comp in the end was quite a challenge to do as well. I had the idea that uh, how would it sound to try to create a drum kit like this without using a drum kit. So all you hear basically are ethnic percussions. And the snare drum is done with a chain inside a barrel, do it like this. And the bass drum is uh, this big bass drum played like this. Uh, there's no hi-hat, there's only the tambourine and all that. So it was a very intriguing process to build the kit up, so to say. Then we come to the last song on the album called Go Slowly, Sands of Time. I just had to include the idea that uh, what would Scrooge McDuck have to say to us um, in the last days of his life. That's what this song is about. And Alan Reed, as the voice of Scrooge, just does such a beautiful job. Because to me, he sounds exactly like Scrooge has always sounded in my head. It's a really, really nice ending. Ending for the album. The sea and the hunter. 